The world will be watching when President Biden steps up to the podium to deliver his State of the Union address tonight. It will be one of his biggest audiences before Election Day this November, and the economy and the migrant crisis are the issues voters say they care about the most. Derek and Kathy Kidd will be in the audience tonight. Their son, Sebastian, died from an overdose after taking a pill that was unknowingly laced with fentanyl. They join us now along with Iowa Congressman Zach Nunn, who invited them to the address. Thank you all so much for joining us this morning. Derek and Kathy, I'm sure today is going to be a long day attending this speech uh, later tonight, but you're going to honor your son and also raise awareness about this fentanyl crisis that, Derek, is just an absolutely tragic and preventable poisoning that's impacting so many families, including your own. Can you tell us what happened to your son? Derek? for anxiety and depression, and he had, uh, unknowingly, we, we did not realize that he had replaced his medication with uh, Percocet on the advice of a friend, and uh, obtained that through a social media site, and uh, unfortunately passed away after taking half of a pill. And he was just 17 years old, right? 17, correct. He was, and Kathy, I give you so much credit for uh, mm. being able to speak about this and also using your precious son's death to raise awareness and make sure that this doesn't happen to other families. He was so handsome. We're looking at pictures of your family right now. Mm. Uh, what would you like to hear the president say tonight? Address the issue. Um, love to hear an action plan. Um, there's kids dying every day, and we'd love to hear a, a plan that's going to be put in place to prevent this from happening to other families. Yeah. And, Congressman, I remember when uh, President Biden met with the president of Mexico and a whole bunch of news was made. There were all these headlines about how the two countries are going to work together to combat fentanyl coming into the United States. And then after that, you heard very little. Do you think the president has done enough to uh, combat this issue? Carly, you bring up a really important point, and it's one that the Kidd family is living out every day. You know, when Derek and Kathy talked to me about this, they highlighted, would their son Sebastian still be with us if the administration had done its job on the important things, like securing the border, like stopping Chinese-made fentanyl from being mass-produced, sent to cartels in Mexico, that end up in places like Iowa, in the heart of the heartland, where folks my age down to my teenage daughter's age is the number one cause of death. So we have not only looked at the president to do more, as Kelly just highlighted, there needs to be an action plan for those big challenges. Yeah. And the reality is, if the president can't get the big things right, then getting those hard things right at the local level, helping kids who are dealing with, uh, you know, in Sebastian's case, anxiety or depression, right. and treating the challenges, we're not going to be able to address it uh, until we get our southern border not only secure, but stop the influx of the deadly fentanyl coming from China through Mexico. Yeah, and I know that this is a big issue in Iowa, and it's something that you've been working to address throughout the, the time you've been serving in Congress. And Derek, I can imagine that one of the most horrific things about this is that your child is home in their bedroom, and you think that they're safe, and then you open their bedroom door or their bathroom door, and you find the thing that is a parent's worst nightmare, the thing that you is, is unimaginable to, to think happen, and it, it's happening right before your very eyes. And when something like this happens, you tend to meet other families that are impacted by this crisis as well. Is that something that you and Kathy have experienced? Yes, we, we've spoken to a number of other families. This is happening every day, unfortunately. And as Congressman Nunn uh, pointed out, you know, we, we can't help but think that uh, our son may still be here if, uh, if, if you know, policies were uh, enforced, if laws were enforced, if the border was under control. Uh, that's, that's one of the things that needs to be focused on. We have, to, we have to try and stop the drugs from coming in or at least lessen the flow. Yeah. But that's just part of the problem. Uh, we, we have to focus on uh, the mental health resources, uh, the lack thereof, and make sure that they're available. And not only make sure that they're available, but make sure that people realize that they are there. Uh, we've had some issues with, uh, you know, with, with people not understanding what's actually available to them. And then on top of that, it's the education. You know, the education 
amongst our youth, uh, but also the education amongst the, amongst the adults. Uh, one of the things that we're running into is, even though this has been out there for years and years, there are so many people that still don't realize, one, that the fentanyl crisis is, is real and it's here, and two, how it ties in with the mental health issues. Yeah. And we have, to, we have to get a firm understanding of all of that in order to, co to combat this. You're right, I, this is a complex problem, so it's gonna take a lot of different things to save lives and, and make sure that there are uh, fewer teenagers that, are, uh, that die as a result of this. Uh, Kathy, before we let you go, we're looking at pictures of your son. We saw the picture of him with his headphones and his dog laying down, hanging out here with a uh, baseball hat on. Uh, can you tell us about mm -hmm. him? What was he like? He was a great kid. Uh, you can tell from his smile he could light up a room. Um, he was an athlete. Um, he, he loved soccer. Uh, he played the saxophone in band. Um, and of course, he loved giving his sister a hard time daily. <laughs> <laughs> so he was a teenage boy. Uh, he was, supportive, through and through. uplifting, and truly kind hearted, a kind hearted soul who loved soccer and played football and liked to go to the skate park as well. Um, I'm reading. Uh, Kathy mm -hmm. Derrick, Congressman, thank you so much for joining us and, and talking about your son and shedding some more light on this issue that desperately needs it. Thank you for joining us.